the basis of addiction is uh, your brain has mistaken that thing for something that is very useful to you one and has historically found it very difficult to get that thing so uh, historically carbohydrate rich foods has been a very good very useful can keep you alive and b has been very difficult to find so we have somehow not adapted to this new environment where carbohydrate rich foods are everywhere and they are not at all difficult to find you can just you know swipe right on swiggy and that's it you have a cake in your house you have you know a burger in your house so you don't have to you don't have to hunt anymore you don't have to go through a forest anymore to find fruits but our brain hasn't gotten used to this new phenomenon yet so which is why we have to train our brain into realizing that you don't need to crave these high carbohydrate foods anymore similarly for tobacco the molecules of tobacco like nicotine which is basically going into your brain and stimulating both gaba and dopamine receptors which tricks your brain into thinking that this is something worth fighting for and it it's like a feel good molecule it makes you feel like you've achieved something and even though you have not you get that sense of achievement uh, so it's a it's a trick that you play on your own brain that is the basis of all addiction so while at the start it might feel good uh, essentially you're tricking your brain into doing something that can have a harmful effect awareness is the first step once you realize that this is what is going on and that feeling of pleasure isn't really real you haven't earned that feeling of pleasure then you realize that the price you have to pay is with your health and is it usually possible for someone to recover from this on their own with the help of say i see a peer going through it and they just refuse recovery because for them they have accepted that this is something that's really good for me so how do i sort of nudge them into you know going through recovery maybe professionally but i think initially it's for them to re- uh, go over that barrier right okay you know what i they're not accepting that this is wrong for me so how do i sort of deal with that Yeah that's the biggest challenge because uh, I remember I used to uh, work in a de addiction OPD when I was in my residency and uh, one of the maxims that the professors used to tell us was that every time an addict comes by themselves to the clinic saying I need help the chances of them recovering from addiction are really high but if it was a partner who brings them you know the wife or the mother or the father then the chances are very low until and unless that person feels motivated to give up on them give up on that habit or at least accepts that that habit is wrong uh, recovery is difficult so step 1 would be to making them aware of why is this a problem only then can we reach to step 2 which is now what do we do about it right so awareness it all comes up awareness, awareness yeah it starts with right. that yes fair point Okay, so now let's talk about another addiction that I think is sort of uh, inherently a part of all our lives: a smartphone addiction. So sure. I'm curious to understand how our brain responds whenever we're, you know, scrolling mindlessly through social media or through YouTube or anything. Uh, this is the this is the modern pandemic, right? Every single one of us has a phone in our hands. Uh, we don't we don't even realize when we lift the phone, open it, and start scrolling. like i when i'm having conversations face to face conversations with people i notice them looking down at their phone they they don't have a notification there's nothing there it's just a habit now we, even if there's a 20 second pause in our conversation you know the other person might open up and start scrolling for no reason there's nothing important it's just a habit now so that is dangerous social media has done some pretty amazing things it, it has brought some really wonderful changes in our lives but this addiction uh where the act of scrolling has become part of our basic personality is it's almost become an instinct that is dangerous because we are essentially being controlled by platforms that get all their money from advertisements cannot forget that for all the good that social media does we cannot forget that the whole basis of that industry is gaining your eyeballs for the purpose of marketing for advertisement so we have to remember that there has to be control and the best way to do it is to build back so all the habits that we've built over the last few years you have to build back so if you feel that you've been scrolling every day non stop then have certain times where you will open up instagram if you are not able to control yourself build back further uninstall the app install it every day in the morning for 1 hour if it if you need to do that it only takes you 5 minutes to install less than 5 minutes to install right so install it scroll for an hour uninstall 
no problems none of your data will be lost but at least you will stop that instinctive opening up and clicking on the app habit so sometimes you do need to take radical steps uh you know in order to get yourself out of a habit and how like i mean i'm sure you've dealt with people how bad has social media addiction got in for people like oh oh <laughs> because when it, you it, said it uh, uninstall and install i'm just like wow that is <laughs> insane <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because it's become such a part of our lives. Uh, we don't, we, we can't even comprehend uh, taking a step so drastic, you know. And but it's not that drastic. Like if you think about it, um, earlier we used to watch television, and uh, we would watch say uh, half an hour, one hour, or we would watch a movie, two hours movie. Imagine if somebody were to tell you that you can carry the television around with you all the time. I mean, that's such a silly idea. Why would I carry the television around with you? So when I leave the house, I don't need to watch a movie. I'll come back and watch a movie. When I leave the house, I have other things to do. I want to talk to my friends. I want to go to work. But that's what we are doing. We are carrying the television around with us in our pocket. So it's not that drastic an idea to leave the television at home. It's fine to do that. you know so we have to just rethink the way we look at the world and suddenly drastic solutions might seem very reasonable